Oh, hold on, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta take this. Hello? Yeah, yeah, we just recently released a video about welding. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, we were welding on Galvanized Pipe. What do you mean he wasn't wearing a respirator? Sure he was. You're watching it right now and he doesn't have one on? No, no, I, I get, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you loud and clear. I have got a dust mask I can give him. What about that? I got a bandana. One of those scuba suits. Well, then what do you want me to give him? Hey, welcome back to the channel, guys. It's Dan with SWI. Today, we're going to teach you how to weld on galvanized pipe and not die. Just a quick word from the SWI disclaimer department. We are in no way guaranteeing that you will not die either before, during, or after welding. In fact, most welders do die sometime within 60 years or so after welding. Also, your safety is your own responsibility. This is not an OSHA sanctioned all-inclusive video on every aspect of welding safety. It's just for general informational purposes designed to get you headed in the right direction. When welding on galvanized pipe, it, as it produces a, that produces a, a big cloud of just not good for you kind of stuff that gets in your lungs and eventually just Okay, so what is galvanized? What is galv poisoning? Let's talk about it. Being overexposed to zinc oxide, which burns off at the high temperatures required to be able to weld. Because it gets in your body because you breathe it in and it shouldn't be there. Because it's bad and it's bad for you. It's so bad and I care. And it gives you all the symptoms of flu-like symptoms. Galv poisoning 2020. Just a quick word from the SWI Galve Poisoning Clarification Department. This illness is also known as metal fume fever. The symptoms can range from mild headache and nausea to chills, shaking, fever, vomiting, and cold sweats. The most severe cases do result in death. Let's talk about the proper things that you should wear and put in place in order to weld on a galvanized pipe. Let's talk about what he's wearing. What he has on is he has a half face respirator. A half face respirator. Work it baby, work it. Yeah, work it, oh yeah. So he has on one type of a half face respirator. Now with these respirators, obviously they're not an SCBA. What is an, SC, what is an SCBA? SCBA stands for self-contained breathing apparatus, which is a supplied air, a positive air, full face respirator equipped with an oxygen bottle on the back. Now with these, it is just a half face. There is no supplied air. What it does is it filters the air you suck in, you're sucking the air through that filter and it's filtering all the, out all those bad particles. It's cleansing the air. It's getting all the bad aura out of the air. Now, something such as like this is not suitable for welding in. Even though this makes me look super cool, it's the new thing, everybody's doing it. And this, all it is is just a dust mask. It has no seal whatsoever right here. I can even feel how it is separated from my face just a little bit. So this, this would not, it's not suitable to weld in. Another kind of respirator that we have is made by 3M. It's a half face, medium. I have one myself. It is recommended that when you are not using them, you store them back in a sealed bag so that, that way it cannot get contaminated with the particulates that you are welding on. If you're hanging them on the back of the back of the welder, it may not be you welding, but maybe somebody else is, and your mask is hanging back there and all the particulates are getting all over your mask. So that's not a good idea. Make sure and put it in a sealed bag so that way it is out of the elements and there's no way that it can possibly get dirty. Also, another thing, don't share a mask. That's dirty, that's wrong. Uh -uh. It's like kissing your sister. It's just something you don't do. Ew. No sharesies. No, no. Bull. So here is my mask, which is very similar to Nolan's mask. And what it's going to do is it's going to come over your nose just like this. And these little particulate filter pleat clad things, my dooies, they're going to sit in between, give you enough clearance to be able to shut that welding head and protect you. Now, as far as the respirator goes, it is required that you get a fit test done. Make sure that you're medically okay and stable to wear one. I'm not your doctor, but you definitely should go see him to see if it is okay for you to go ahead and wear a respirator. And a medical professional will evaluate the kind of welding that you are doing and match it with a specific kind of respirator that you belong to. Oh, okay, so this is the last one that I have and it's a big one. It's facial hair. 
If you have facial hair, you're gonna run the risk of the mask not properly sealing against your face. It may not be 100% sealed between your face and that mask. Just gonna throw that one out there. Sunglasses, I don't know where they went. Sunglasses, they're not suitable. Welding and sunglasses, there's a welding helmet for a reason. Just a quick word from the SWI Welding Helmet Information Department. There is a welding helmet for a reason. While the welding arc just looks like an extra bright light source, it actually carries radiation in the UV, infrared, and visible light spectrums, which can do everything from burn the cornea to damage the retina, and can cause anywhere from temporary to permanent blindness, along with other eye problems. The most common welder's eye injury is known as welder's flash. And boy, is it painful. There's also harmful effects from UV radiation to the skin of your face. So just wear your helmet. All right, so, Oh, my eyeball, my eyeball itches. Oh, that's a good one. Ooh, hold on. Oh, yeah. Well, hey, no, no, no. <laughs> get get out of here. What are you doing? So obviously we're not gonna weld in these kind of gloves because what's gonna happen is nothing but holes are gonna get burned in. These are like sparky gloves, like electrician gloves. Something that you're gonna wanna play and get your fingers on with that's really small. Welding gloves such as, Nolan, would you like to talk about your welding gloves? They're designed for welding. They're designed for hot metal, yeah! So these little, these little bad boys right here, they're designed for welding. These are what they call welding gloves. You don't see them all the time being used, but when somebody's playing with hot, hot magma, <laughs> then you're gonna use them. You're gonna use something thick like this, so that way it gives you more protection down your arm, your little handies. So that way Nolan's little handies don't get burnt in his little fingertippies. So we got, we got his mask covered, we got his gloves covered. He's even, what do you got, what do you got going on right here? Are you? You put these sleeves on and it just helps protect you from sparks, and things of that nature. So although I am not welding, I'm still gonna go ahead and put my mask on because I'm in the area. I'm in his personal space, I'm in his bubble. All right, so now if you're working in, in the shop and you have a welder going and you're also trying to do something else, you're doing simultaneous operations, what we have here is a welding screen. So that way we are deflecting the, all the bright flashes and all the arcs and whatnots that is staying over there on his side, whereas over here on my side, that's a lot better. So we have a demonstration here that we are going to weld the way that we normally have been, and then we're gonna do a traditional weld over the galvanized pipe just to show those two different types of welds. Also, while he's welding, we have a traditional shirt laying on the table, and we have a welding jacket laying right on top of that. So we're gonna see how the shirt makes it out, how much more a welding jacket can deflect hot sparks than just a traditional shirt. The shirt is 50% cotton, 50% polyester. So here, what you have is, what do you know? The shirt caught on fire, it burned some holes in it, and the jacket did not seem to whatsoever catch on fire or have any holes burned through it. Other things that you can do, along with your mask, get a fan, put a fan up, keep, that, keep all that zinc oxide going away from your person. But the other thing you can do is you can open up your garage door, your shop door, you can point that fan going outside so that that way you're blowing all those particulates outside. Make sure and get them going a direction other than at your person or lingering in your area of work. That is the safety tips of working around and working with galvanized coated pipe and welding on it. Dan with SDBI and hope you have a good dang day.